Hello, everyone. My name is Shweta Shavasta, and I lead the Open Air Interface 5G development and testing effort at OpenAirX Labs at Northeastern University. In this video, we showcase end-to-end -end 5G standalone mode deployment over Colosseum using Open Air Interface. Let me start with an overview of the Colosseum testbed. Colosseum is a massive $20 million wireless emulator testbed housed at Northeastern University. It was developed by DARPA and is funded by the National Science Foundation. Colosseum is a large scale testbed with 128 Intel Xeon based compute servers, each connected to a software defined programmable radio. Colosseum has a massive channel emulator, which provides 256 times 256 100 megahertz RF channel emulation. It provides real-time emulation with complex RF scenarios. Colosseum is remotely accessible and can be used by researchers around the globe. Currently, it is primarily used by researchers from the NSF community to run experiments in various areas, including spectrum sharing, AI in wireless, 5G, IoT, and so on. Another initiative we have here is the OpenAirX Labs. OpenAirX Labs is a lab system incubated within the Institute for Wireless Internet of Things at Northeastern University. This is part of the Platforms for Advanced Wireless Research, or the POWER program. It is funded by NSF and U.S. Department of Defense's Office of the Undersecretary of Defense, Research and Engineering Division. OAX Labs is also supported by Open Air Interface Software Alliance Board as the official North American Designate Affiliate Development Partner. OAX Labs is basically the North American home for development, testing, and integration of Open Air Interface 5G standalone mode software stack, with the goal to provide a benchmark end to end 5G standalone reference architecture to promote 5G innovation. We are happy to announce that we have reached a key milestone towards achieving that goal by successfully deploying end-to-end -end open air interface 5G standalone protocol stack over Colosseum. This enables 5G researchers to deploy a complete open source 5G protocol stack over Colosseum and also paves the way for OAI 5G to be deployed over other test benches, including other power platforms. In the next part of this video, we present a demo of end-to-end -end 5G deployment over Colosseum. This slide depicts the configuration we use to deploy OAI over Colosseum, um, including the one used in our demo. We use three nodes, also called SRNs or standard radio nodes. As you can see from the block diagram, all software used by user experiments on Colosseum is de deployed within LXC containers on the SRNs. On SRN1, shown on the right, we deploy OAI 5G core network. OAI 5G core network functions are deployed within Docker containers, and they run on a separate Docker network. OAI core network components currently include AMF, SMF, UPF, and NRF. The demo OAI interface provides a bridge into the Docker network. The GNODE B runs in an LXC container on SRN2 and connects to the core network host via Ethernet. SRN2 is connected to USRPX310 that the GNODE B uses to communicate over the emulated wireless channel. On the left is SRN3, which is the UE host. The OAI UE runs in an LXC container on SRN3 and also transmits and receives via a USRPX310. The RF channel between UE and GNODE-B is provided by Colosseum's massive channel emulator. In our deployment, we currently emulate a simple 0 dB path loss scenario. Here I'm remotely connected to the three hosts or SRNs on Colosseum that we will use in the demo. The bottom window connects to the machine running the core network. The top left one is to the machine that will run the SDR-based OAI GNODE-B. And the top right window connects to the host where we will run the SDR-based OAI UE. 
I have Wireshark running here that will capture the packets exchanged between the 5G core network and the OEIG node B. OEI 5G core network functions are deployed as Docker containers on the first host. Docker P assures um, that we have the NRF, AMF, SMF, and UPF running. So I will go ahead and start the G node B on the second host. And as the G node B initializes, we see that it successfully exchanges the ng setup request and response messages with the core network. On the third host, I will now start the UE. And as the UE um, starts and initializes, we will see that it first successfully exchanges the control plane messages with the core network and registers successfully with the core network. The UE also establishes a PDU session with the core network in order to be able to exchange user plane traffic. We will also see that the UE has been assigned an IP address by the core network. After setting the default route at the UE side, I will now run pings in both the directions to demonstrate user plane traffic. I will first ping from the UE to the other side of the core network. I will ping the TR0 interface at the host running the core network. This interface is typically used in Colosseum to exchange user plane traffic. In our case, we'll use it to um, run ping. So I will use the IP address of this host and I'm going to ping it from the UE machine. And as we can see, that ping goes successfully. And we can also see those packets exchanged um, in Wireshark here. I will now ping the UE from the other side of the core network and the IP address of the UE as we um, saw earlier was this. And again, we can see that ping is um, going successfully um, in, in the other direction as well. And we can see those packets going um, through Wireshark um, between the core network and the GNOME B. Hi, uh, this is Mario Zhong from Northeastern. Today, I'm going to show you the um, high bandwidth testing between the OIUE and GNOME B. So on the screen, you can see that um, on the left, is the, we're going to run the GNOME B. At top, we're going to run the iPad from the uh, core network. On the right, you can see we're going to run the uh, ORUE. And on this top, you, we're going to run the iPad from the uh, UE. So first of all, let me start the GNOPE. At the same time, I'm going to start the uh, UE. So you can see this message. So. Um, So you can see that the uh, PDU section established successfully. So uh, my next step is to uh, step the route. On the UE side, I also need to find out the IP address assigned by the uh, core network. So this is uh, 12.1.5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Test the uh, uplink IP first. So I will run the um, IP server on the GNOME B, and then I'll run the IP client. I'm sorry. So I will let it running for about uh, 30 seconds. So you can see the data rate is quite uh, smooth and you don't see any error. So 
Uh, my next step uh, is to run the uh, downing iperf, meaning the iperf uh, packet from the GMOB to the UV. So let me uh, stop the iperf, the uplink iperf. So now I'm going to run the uh, iperf server on the UV side. And then I will start the client on the Gino B side. I'll also let you run for like 30 minutes. So you can see the data rate is also uh, very smooth, eight megabit per second, and there's no error. Um, so that would be the end of my demonstration. Thanks so much.